that's usually what we do. That's like even when we shot Chris Pratt, we're like, let's get a trampoline there. Let's um, <laughs> get a motorcycle, do something. Because we hadn't worked with them before. And you're like, you just have things that they can be doing because it can be really difficult to get someone to like just start giving really? stuff up yeah. and create stuff for you. So it's like you have to have those ideas going in. I mean, Chris Pratt's probably the best subject we've ever had because he's just constantly doing crazy it, shit. So you're like, just make sure the camera's full and ready and just go. Yeah. You know? If you lead an interesting life, good pictures will happen. Oh, nice. You might well be my sexiest sounding guest. Go somewhere you've never been before and take a camera. We had this gorgeous Mediterranean light just flowing in. Which as do we win? A Dartford. Very nice. The first 10,000 pictures of your worst. Let's sit down. Let's have a cup of tea. Welcome to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome, as always, to another episode of the Standout Photography Show with me, Matthew Walker, where it is my honour and privilege to sit down with the finest working photographers in the world to unpack their systems, workflows, and find out what enables them to perform consistently at the top of their profession. On this week's show, episode 17, I welcome celebrity portrait photographers Derek and Drew Riker, a.k.a. The Riker Brothers. That is RikerBrothers.com on the World Wide Webs and at Riker Brothers on Instagram. Born in Iowa City and growing up in a small town west of Chicago, twin brothers Derek and Drew Riker were introduced to photography by their father. After graduating from the University of Illinois with degrees in economics and both taking jobs in Chicago, the brothers were left feeling unfulfilled in the business world. It was a chance encounter on vacation in Miami Beach that started their careers in photography when they were scouted to be models for the famous fashion label Abercrombie and Fitch. Their first assignment was shooting with the mighty Bruce Weber for Vogue, and after two days on location immersed in the creative environment, it was clear what their new career path would be. Living between New York and Miami over the next several years, they became obsessed with fashion photography and imagery. They were lucky enough to learn from some of their idols, including, of course, Bruce Weber, Arthur Elgort, and their close friend and mentor, Herb Ritz. An emphasis on natural light allows them the freedom of movement and to be spontaneous, with one behind the camera to technically compose, the other is free to connect directly with the subject, giving them an amazing ability to capture authentic moments. The brothers are currently based in beautiful Los Angeles, where they joined me on a scorching hot Tuesday morning for episode 17 of the Standout Photography Show. Throughout our conversation, we discuss portrait photography, working with celebrity clients, including someone I hugely admire, Mr. Mark Warburg, directing models, shooting quickly, learning on the job, backlighting subjects, shooting with single lights, plugins, creating a film look on digital, and confidence on set. Without further ado, please join me from Los Angeles with none other than Derek and Drew, the Riker Brothers. Derek and Drew, aka the Riker Brothers, welcome to the Standout Photography Show. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for having us. Yes, thank you. Absolute pleasure. And I feel, I feel slightly honoured. This is the first interview... I've done with with two people on the episode. Well, wow. see, teams teams are getting more popular these days, so yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, and so you, I'm sure there will be more. I'm sure there will, and you're also across the pond in beautiful Los Angeles. Yeah, I mean, super hot today, so not, you yeah, know, but it is a great place to be for what we do. So it's it's great. Now, yeah. out of interest, you say super hot. I'm over here in in the UK, and it's quite hot here. I'm guessing it's not as hot as where you are. What's the temperature this morning? And bear in mind, it's 10 o'clock in the morning for you guys. It's 82 Fahrenheit right now. So that's actually not too bad yet, but there's been humidity as well. And it'll, it'll get up to it'll, almost 100 today. Yeah, it's going to sure. be bad today. We're in so. a heat wave, so. Oof. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, not, it's not a whole lot of fun. 
<laughs> goodness me, goodness me. Well, look, how do you... This may sound like a really obvious question, but how do you personally describe yourselves and your work as photographers? Do you want to go there? You, you, got, you always. I mean, I guess we would <clears throat> consider ourselves mostly like our po- we're portrait photographers. Yeah. It's really just about people. Uh, even though we started off our career in the fashion side, um, because we were we were models and started we, we got into the business because we we were scouted to be models when we were in our twenties. Yeah, I, um, yeah. I mean, I was a banker out of college. We lived in Chicago um, right out of college, and uh, I was yeah. a banker. He was in sales, and we were on our second year of our jobs. We were on vacation in South Beach, Miami. And we were scouting to model, and uh, and kind of the heyday of kind of like fashion. We what we think is like fashion photography yeah, and all yeah. that stuff was going down in Miami. You know, Johnny Versace lived down there. Bruce Weber was, you know, They're still there. has a house the right north of Miami. They're like all these huge, you know, photographers spent time there. And you would see all these huge productions on the beach that you would never, you know, growing up in the Midwest, mostly, you know, you never see any, you know, nothing about the entertainment business or. TV shows, fashion magazines, or... Yeah, and, and Miami there. Beach wasn't kind of like as popular as it was now. It was kind of this, like, hidden place where people could really hide out. Like, I mean, Mickey Rourke had a bar that we used to go to yeah. called The Spot that he was there, like, every and night. Like, and you would there be supermodels, supermodels playing and, pool yeah. with, and we're like... Yeah. You know, and any any guy our age at the time who was down there was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stay here. Or yeah, I gotta yeah. figure out how this can be my life or whatever. Yeah, that's basically what so, we did. Yeah. Which is, yeah. but but we we I mean the one you know thing about being twins is we we did get scouted by by these uh, modeling agencies to be like, hey, would you consider doing this? And yeah. I mean Bruce Weber had put us on hold for our for, who we didn't know who he was at the time, yeah. and. Uh, we were like, okay. Uh, we yeah, because, I mean, literally, we were at the end of our vacation. We just thought it was funny. We did, like, a couple test shoots with photographers while we were there. We just go back to Chicago, where we're from, at our jobs, and all of a sudden, there were no cell phones or anything back then. They're calling us at work, you know, yeah. these agencies asking, like, you know, we have these agencies from Miami calling you. Bruce Weber was really interested in you. Have you guys ever thought of this? You should come and see us, you know, at the agencies in Chicago. So, And, and back yeah. then, you did make quite a bit of money doing it. You know, it was especially yeah. male models at that point. They, they started making a ton of money, which they don't. You can't make that kind of money. No, really. no, I don't think it's the same these way. days. But um, but so I mean, I certainly wasn't happy in my job. And yeah. You know, but so I mean, the longest story ever right now, <laughs> longer, <laughs> is, uh, is that we ended up doing. You know, we ended up diving in. We you quit know our quit jobs. our jobs and and so so you know. And immediately we're shooting with Bruce Weber, uh, yeah, we Arthur Elgo, you know, we moved to Miami Beach and we're immediately booked on these things. And so, I mean, we really have kind of like the dream story for um, people who are interested in photography because it was our father's hobby, too. So it was something we yeah. loved from the time we were kids. Yeah. Um, our dad was all he took pictures at everything, our whole entire lives. Like, yeah, I mean, our sister time. still can't stand him because he always had a camera up in her face. And he didn't miss him. one sporting event. He was a lawyer like in Chicago and then Manhattan when we were in high school. He still was at every game with a camera shooting everything we ever did. And he but, became a printer in New York. Like uh, when we put our jobs to model, our dad actually started taking printing classes um, in downtown, like at the new school in Manhattan. Um, after work, like that whole process. And it was brilliant because when we first started actually shooting pictures, he he's, was a, he's a color printer too. So he would print our whole books out and stuff. So we kind of had a, we got kind really of a lucky competitive advantage at that point for people because it was super expensive to try to start being a yeah. photographer back then with paying for film, paying for processing, yeah. you know, having it printed. I mean, there's no such thing as retouching back then in, unless you yeah. are no, a no. famous photographer, you know. Because we like to shoot, like, clearly portraiture and people. We really want to get authentic, real moments. And shooting as a team, that's the whole process. Is like Derek mostly shoots now, and I just sit there and just talk to them. Or even if we're shooting in studio, I'll just have them putting their hands in their pockets, kind of walking back and forth like this as Derek's shooting to get these really real moments. Even if he's doing tight stuff, we like to have them doing something. It's just basically distract people, yeah. you know, because a lot of what we do is entertainment or, uh, or you know, yeah. a lot of people aren't, they're not used to, they're not, they're not supermodels. So it's like, even actors sometimes are, you know, not real comfortable in front of the camera. Some are amazing, but yeah. a, a lot aren't. So then you have to kind of over direct them to get them comfortable. Or, or basically that's, as a team, it's cheating because, 
Yeah. We're Drew's basically distracting the whole yeah, time with yeah. like talking, yeah. connecting with them while I'm just literally shooting away and yeah. you know. Um, so I mean that's really kind of the secret to what I think a lot of times our pictures are different because they actually have lots of energy and life and connection because it's not so posed. Like we're not, you know, I mean, a lot of fashion photography is very stark looking off, not, you know, uh, okay. our, ours, we like it to be very full of life and, you know, we love That's smiles. Weird. We you Yeah. Know, so do you think that you're because you spent so many years in front of the camera, do you think that that has helped you? in your work behind the camera when it comes to working with models? Yes, for sure. I mean, that's like literally the whole reason we do what we do, because I, I was quite anxious as a model. I hated being in front of the camera, but being twins and I understood like the draw of us and we worked a lot, we're making a lot of money, so I just kind of forced myself to keep modeling and doing it. But I, I just was horrified half the day shooting. So and, as a photographer, I literally do this just to like over coddle people well, to make sure that they're comfortable we, and don't have to feel what I felt. Yeah, you know? and then there's days when you're modeling back then, you're shooting with world's greatest photographers one day who are brilliant and are like, they have a process and it's like, you know, basically like Bruce Weber is kind of like, it's like in the Peter Beard school, just create an event and like have a good time and then the pictures happen, you know? His was like going to, like a Bruce Weber shoot was literally like going to a, a summer, you know, pool party or, or yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's like, there's food happening. There's, you know, and people are just hanging out. And, and Bruce is just a voyeur kind of capturing everything. And then he would kind of key on a couple people and then like maybe do little bits of direction. But it's like, that's why his photos are so real. Yeah, there might be 20 different people on his <laughs> set of, of models that have all gone to sty style them. You know, you go to the styling house, they, they dress you up and then it's kind of like, just hang out. And then the, the way you really become a great model is that, you learn that it's like you have to create the moment for Bruce to notice you. That's and that, so it's like, kind of like a pose off or like, yeah. it's it's weird because you can see things like happening. You're like, oh, these guys have been working, you know, you see these dudes Bruce a lot. Like, oh so, and they start wrestling and or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, oh, they're trying to get him to come over there to shoot him. And you're like, yeah, he's kind of genius that he got known for that. So he would just book a ton of models to start just creating their own stuff, and then he would go over there and just capture that. Like so, a lot, yeah, that's why a lot of his stuff looks like really authentic, real stuff, because it's, that's kind of how it's, and everyone kind of knew it who was getting booked for him, or even your bookers would be like, listen, when you go there, you gotta perform. You have to, you know, like create and be willing to do whatever it is that, you know, what's happening that day. You know, it's not some place where you go and just are like, well, it's, and then for us, shooting entertainment with actors and celebrities and stuff, you really don't have that freedom so much because they only have a limited amount of time and they're not just going to create without you telling them what to do. Like, so you, you have to kind of create the scene for them, direct them specifically what they're going to, you have to have it all thought out so that you can, I mean, the first time we ever shot Mark Wahlberg, we literally had an hour and a half at the middle of the day from like yeah. noon to one thirty in the afternoon in a black parking lot, like in the middle of it. Yeah, and I mean, like, I mean we yeah. mostly shoot, uh, like ideally we prefer like, to be shooting on location outdoors. All available light. Like, like, available light. Yeah, and yeah. so it's like the minute you get the email that it's like, it's gonna be from 12 to two in the <laughs> middle of the summertime where the sun is literally directly above and yeah. we're outside, we're like, we um, can't get scrims big enough to yeah. do something that we're gonna like to do. Yeah. But it's like, you know, you, 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 you do what you can, you put, yeah. Um, yeah, that's but with, what, yeah, you but with Mark, the whole thing is we just created a day, um, like a bunch of activities to start with. We knew we'd play basketball, so we had a basketball hoop set up, you know, with a truck, so he could just be shooting. And that's how we started the shoot, is when we were just talking and hanging out, and like getting to know each other, like, hey, I'm Drew, Derek, you know. We had, we had some, some mutual, mutual friends. friends we're the same and age, so, and we were yeah. in LA back, you know, 20, yeah. three, four years ago. So we, we kind of had some mutual people yeah. we knew. So, But then we just had a shooting, shooting hoops while we were doing that. And then we connected over the people that we knew commonly. Um, and then he just started being himself and shooting, shooting. And then, then we kind of dragged him from there to another situation quickly. Yeah. Do a couple portraits and then. Yeah, that's usually what we do. That's like even when we shot Chris Pratt, we're like, um, Let's get a trampoline there. Let's um, <laughs> get a motorcycle, do something. Because we hadn't worked with them before. And you're like, you just have things that they can be doing because it can be really difficult to get someone to like 
just start giving Great. stuff up yeah. and create stuff for you. So it's like you have to have those ideas going in. And uh, I mean, Chris Pratt's probably the best subject we've ever had because he's just constantly doing crazy it, shit. It, so it you're like, just make sure the camera's full and ready and just go. Yeah. Yeah. So. Do you think... It's quite interesting because I was looking at your, your client list and you've mentioned Chris Pratt, you've mentioned Mark Wahlberg. Included also in your client list is wonderful David Harewood. He's a lovely actor who I've worked with previously. Oh, yeah. He's so great. Wonderful man. Uh, Anne Hathaway, Isla Fisher, Halle Berry. These are all, they're not just high profile people, they're also high performing people. Yeah. Mark Warburg, for example, with the 4AM Club. Yeah. Incredible. Do you think, yeah. Oh, yeah. do you think working with high performing clients helps you guys to perform at your very best and keeps you on your toes as well that's an oh. interesting question that's yeah. probably why we are the way we are like even just hearing that question like yeah that yeah. that might be why because it's literally it's it's just a lot of pressure at that you know when you get to where we are it's literally because you know there there's an intense amount of pressure the first you have some a-list film actor who's promoting this two hundred million dollar film, and there, I mean, when people are behind that and they're going to invest money in you to get these pictures and whatever, it's it's a shit ton of pressure. There's a lot of people around. Um, no, but and the point is, yeah. like, yeah, so inspired yes. by getting because we've shot Mark all the time, and after we shot him the first time, he actually invites to shoot in his home, and we've shot about four different jobs where we just come to his home and shoot him there. So just having that trust, but being around him and seeing how he lives his life, you're like. It's very inspiring. We're like, oh, this is what uber successful, you know, yeah. people in the entertainment business yeah. do and how they act. And yes, yeah, I, I so feel like, like, oh my God, gift. I need to raise the expectations on myself. Yeah. It's like, holy yeah, cow. We're just lucky go, yeah. we've gotten to, with, with our, our list of people, we've gotten to have, you know, work with so many incredible, like. Yeah. yeah and luckily, everyone we have worked with has been really like people that were connected and, you know, didn't have a bad day the day we shot them, you know, because yeah. it's like, you understand, you might get someone who's just, this isn't going to be a good day regardless of who's shooting this, you know, so it's like, we've, we've kind of lucked out that we've never had that, like, bad day. oh my God, yeah. we didn't get it. Like, this is, shit. Exactly. This is you know, yeah. so. You, you mentioned a couple of interesting things there. Derek, you just touched on pressure because it's another thing that I've spoken with a lot of photographers about because you're right, there's... On particularly larger scale shoots, there's a lot of people, there's big budgets, there's time restraints, like you guys said, particularly with high profile clients. How do you guys, well, firstly, actually, do you feel that pressure? And if so, what techniques have you developed to use it to your advantage and get the best from your work? I, yeah, thankfully, the highest pressure ones, you know, We've been doing this quite a while, so it's like we were able to just kind of harness it and kind of like I, I would say it's kind of like being an athlete who wants the ball at the end of, of the game, end of the yeah. game or something like that because it's it's like I don't know what it is, but when that's on, that's where we actually excel. Like we're, we were athletes growing up and stuff, and I, it does feel like almost an athletic thing, a leadership type of role where you just like and then just to be able the one good thing about being twins in that kind of setting is that you're really a politician on those sets and you're, you need to be working all the right people, you know? And it's like, that's, that's and, shooting in a team lets you like deal with the pressure much different. Yeah. Better. Yeah. I'd sure. hate to like, honestly, a lot of those, I don't, I, by myself, it would have been nearly impossible because our, there might be shit going down with your assistants and like technical things with like the studio. But now you've got like, the publicist is now in your ear. The management is like, he's got to go quickly. The fact that we can just like, split up and kind of put out both fires and then come back and keep everyone focused, you know, is... Yeah, because it, it's those things that you just don't know when you first start taking pictures. It's like, oh my God, your biggest nightmare is going to be like the, you know, the exec from Netflix who's there, who's really in charge, who's like telling you, yeah. you know, what you have to do at that moment when you that's not what you want to be doing, you know? Yeah, I... One of the things we earned, uh, learned early on in, in the business of shooting entertainment and, and actors and stuff is that like speed is like of the utmost like importance. Oh, yeah. Like how fast the shoot goes in is, is literally maybe the number one thing. Like a couple of our friends are the biggest publicists in town. And that's how we've gotten to like interact and meet a ton of, of people. Um, 
But his first thing is like, just be fast and people will love you because that's what they're going to remember about the day. Half yeah. the time, the celebrity may not even see these pictures because they don't care. They, they don't, you know. <laughs> just know what you're there for. And yeah. it's like, and, yeah. and guess what? This picture isn't important. I know maybe your first time <laughs> shooting them, but if you want to shoot again. I mean, they're all important. Yeah, of course, I mean, every yeah. photo is completely 100% yeah. amazing and important. But, but, but yeah, I mean, that, that was that was probably the third time we shot Mark Wahlberg. We we got done in 20 minutes and we yeah. did like four setups and it, he was just like, are you sure? And we're like, yeah, we're done. We're, and we're just like, this is just a point that we're going to do just for effect. And it's like, no, yeah. we got it. And it's just about confidence. And we did know we got it. So it's like, yeah. we wouldn't have, we didn't. Yeah. But after you've been editing shoots for so many years and when you do it and reading people, you know, like, you're like, yes, we got it. And he's only going to go south right now. Yeah, uh, it's only going to get worse. It's like, let's just call it. And it's like, are you confident? And then we look and it's like, yeah, let's just call it. It's because just, it's just people, will, it'll yeah. blow their minds that they just got it in 20 minutes. And it's like, yeah. And then when they get the pictures, they're like, holy cow. This, com- like- this actually also comes from a story. Like her Brits was a very close friend and like our and mentor. Our He's friend. actually the photographer we worked with a lot as models. And then when we started shooting and told him that he kind of coddled us and said, and when we showed him our book for the first time, it was like, oh my God, like, it was so nerve wracking to see what he was going to say about it. But he was like, yeah. oh, my God, this is amazing. Like, you guys should really. We were living in New York, between New York and then Miami. Had a place in Miami in the winter. So he's like, why don't you guys come move out to L.A. and, like, come on my sets? And, like, you know, I, we can work with me, you. And then when you guys are ready for a good I mean, we'll, Which we'll, also we'll is, like, an incredible blessing at that time in our careers to be on sets with Herb Ritz, working with. The creative director at the time was Charles Churchward, who turned to be one of our greatest friends. And, uh, you know, you're on set seeing how this stuff gets done at the highest level. You're seeing, we were watching the cover of Vogue being shot, plus the interior, plus that one shoot with Gwyneth. Yeah. It was like Kevin Aquans doing makeup, doing like transforming Gwyneth Paltrow into like uh, Elizabeth Taylor and stuff like that, which is just genius. But you can actually see how the sausage is made. You're yeah. like, oh my god, okay. Well, this is pretty incredible. Yeah. And that's and then you can see how Herb is working with Charlie, and Charlie's yeah. telling us like, well, we just don't like the shadow in this picture, so we want to soften this up. So we just change the light out from you know the yeah. soft box to the Herb did these Fresnel strobes, which is yeah. you know. <laughs> But no, but that's what I'm just trying no, to I love say. how we get off track like this, because the whole point of this question was like... Hey, look, you, you cannot go off track on this it's podcast. Not right with others too. We just, we can gab like crazy, it's horrible. But, um, but um, yeah, we never get anything done in our personal no, lives. The, the point like, is, um, this one story about her, like he literally was shooting like the Chanel campaign, I forget who the model was or whatever. Yeah. He literally shot like a half a roll of film and was like, we got it, that's it. Like, let's let's stop. He's like... We're, We're just going to break for lunch. for lunch. Let's yeah. go. Let's go process this. Break for lunch. Come back. And like the client was like, that's amazing. I mean, not he was huge and people gave him that respect and they were like, yeah, that's that's the shot. You know, Yeah, I'm not sure. It never happened today. I'm not sure client, anyone but. gets away with that stuff anymore because <laughs> uh, because even the big photographers, it's like they're not they're clearly not making what they used to be making, like in the 90s yeah. and the early 2000s with all the licensing dollars and stuff that uh they used to make for all the billboards and stuff. No one gets paid the way yeah. they did in the 90s. I mean, yeah. her, the amount of money he was making on every single job in licensing, yeah. you're like, uh, yeah, that's never happening again. You yeah. know, yeah. so. Do, do, uh, it, it's interesting. Your path into the industry is, is fascinating, and it's not one that I've explored with other guests on the show. When you were modeling, do you remember the point and, and what was it where you started to enjoy what was happening behind the camera versus what you were well, doing as models? Because, and, and I don't mean this as idle flattery, you both could quite easily still have a very good career as models now, but you've chosen to go behind yeah. the camera. Do you remember the moment and why yeah, you started to first, go behind? From the, first shoot, from the first shoot with Bruce Weber. I mean, first shoot ever. So yeah. funny. I actually brought my dad had gotten us like our first professional cameras. I had like a Canon. I have a Nikon FM1. They're over there. We're just like our first little, you know. And I had mine on the shoot and was shooting pictures of Bruce Weber during the shoot because we were so fascinated at like yeah. this is a huge amazing. production. It's After like, being oh. at a bank, you know, in Chicago, like during the winter, and then for your job, you're literally on this set 
this and, mansion in, in, Boca, in, Raton. in Boca Raton. Yeah, it's and like, just it was so fascinating. We're like, oh my god, this is the life I want. This is insane. He's he's just a photographer taking pictures and. He clearly makes a fortune at what he does, and we had no clue that this existed in the world. Yeah. So. And then, yeah, yeah. And then, I mean, and then it's like, I mean, we were so interested in photography to begin with, but you're like, with Bruce, I was like, this is how this works. Like, you know. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's great. And then your my next job was like a catalog thing, which was a total disaster because you're like, you have to model now, and I'm like, oh, I've only been on Bruce Weber sets before, so I didn't realize you. Now you gotta like dance and have a routine, and I, mean, yeah. I was like, but then those photographers don't even direct you. It's just kind of like you gotta go, and yeah. I'm like, oh well, this is horrible, you know. <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah, but you but you start observing every single person that's shooting and why it looks the way it does. You're always trying to get the final product to see like when it comes out. And back then it was great because you it would be out in a magazine that you could find easily. It would just it, you know. It was like, oh, that one's in, you know. Yeah, so it wasn't, the best part was being on these big shoots and then getting to see the magazine come out like three months later, four months later. And then you see the images that they get in their edit and you learn so much from just seeing what they end up producing. Oh, especially like Bruce Weber, our first thing was Abercrombie in like 1994. Seven. One of the last shots of the day is very, just like really kind of getting low light and it's, and the light was coming from behind and it felt so dark in the front. And I'm just like, is this going to be any good? But I'm like, Bruce is shoots this stuff and then when it came out it was the biggest portrait at Abercrombie and Fitch of me it was a headshot where it's like a headshot but it was this backlit I'd never seen like backlight like that before like I never light, really like a light backlit like this yeah. it was gorgeous and right? I was like oh my god so the backlight stuff is what creates that beautiful ethereal kind of like that light that you see and you're like oh my god which is funny because we're on sets now with like publicists shooting celebrities and we'll do like this backlight stuff. And then they're like, is this looking any good? Because we're not using any lights and in person it may not look fantastic. But we're like, no, this is the best shot of the day. Just, you know, trust him, come on. Yeah. yeah. And then they, you know, later on they, they, they get it. Yeah, a lot of people like, don't understand how backlit shots are shot. It's like, oh, it's just. Because they're shooting it on their iPhone and it's it's too, making up. Too dark or. So then it know. looks really bad. But of course. Expose it properly. Of course. And it's like, oh wow. It looks amazing. So. But then also, you know, I mean, luckily, I mean, it was literally the best education in photography ever because it's like we got to work with Arthur Elgort a couple times and watching him work. Which and is like, very similar. This was like going on vacation with your with your grandfather and he had like a little point and shoot 35 millimeter thing hanging around his neck. He shot with like three or four different yeah. cameras. Yeah. And it would just be like, get dressed. We're going to dinner at a restaurant, then you put a flash on a camera and just do it. It felt like you were at a, your grandfather's. Yeah, like, I'm like, are these pictures going to be like, what is this going to be even, you know? Yeah. And then when those come out in vogue and you're like, For what, beautiful. you know? Yeah. And, and that yeah. one was with Stella Tennant, the one that was in yeah. West Palm Beach. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, holy shit, that's just brilliant. Like, he's just shooting real life. Like, we were just said, you know, like, and he's oh, never using lights, well, you know, well, never photographers using, we ever shot, like, in the beginning. None of them are using any lights or reflectors even. It's like Bruce and, and Arthur and stuff. So, the, I mean, they're our biggest influences, really. I mean, then Herb, of course, and Herb was kind of the same way, but he was doing more direct light and things like that. And then you have lights, you know, outside sometimes. But um, it's also simple what they did. Like, Herb, it's not, we, it's we not have, complicated at all. It, it really is just, you And know, then even with, like, our closeness with Herb, when we moved to L.A. originally, we would go to dinner, like, almost every Friday, um, and we'd have like little chats about things. He was talking to us about what films to use with certain people, like certain actresses may have bad skin. He's like, you might want to use 400 speed film to make it a little grainier. And, yeah, yeah. But he's like, for studio, he's like, I just use one main light source, very simple. For yeah, he's like, don't stress women, out about studio. Like, just do that, deal. you know, for men, maybe bring it off to the side, but it was all so basic. And even when we shot with him, it was always like one light, you know, like ever in the studio. So. Yeah. Was your interest, when you were working as models, was your interest in what was happening behind the camera, was that to improve you as models, or was that because you always had one eye on a career behind the camera? Yeah, it was, I mean, it was kind or of... Or a combination. Yeah, it was kind, kind of both, of, kind of both, yeah. Cause, uh, but I remember always, because even when we were modelling, we were always taking pictures of our friends and, like, testing people just for fun because we always were like so fascinated by the process 
and you'd be on these beautiful locations and it just seemed like a waste that you shouldn't shoot something there and we're like yeah. get, get one of your friends or ask somebody to come out and like let's go do it or we just shoot each other you know i mean so so in the beginning it's like we love photography but we're thinking of it literally like i'm going to be a photographer like right away it was just something we continued to do was shooting pictures it was literally when we were 29 going to be turning 30 that year that we're like and Which was also Y two K, and we thought the world was going to end. We're like, you know, it was ridiculous. Plus, we're just like uh, watch, the, the know, Millennium Bug on TV. And it was a true passion, like you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Celestine Prophecy came out that year. Oh, that yeah. changed my life. The Celestine <laughs> Prophecy. No, no, no. no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but we're like turning thirty. You're like, what? Okay, what? What are we doing with our lives? This is crazy. Um, and we're like, well, this is a very easy answer. It was like, we're just going to be photographers. So it's like, and, and I remember we, January fourth, two thousand. We went and bought our first professional camera at like the only camera store that was open, which was a, a Canon A2, A2 with like an 85 millimeter lens and a 50, an yeah. 85 and a 50. Yeah, and it was like, okay, here we go. And, and then we just started shooting that afternoon, and uh, we actually have an exhibit from it was a one roll of 36 millimeter film like, from the first roll we shot. 30, yeah. Which was basically 36 exposures. Yeah, Joey we taking of me at this one. But location. we used like 12 of those images from the first roll, like in an exhibit. We had an exhibit of like 20 some images of just images yeah. that we'd shot of ourselves, and like half of yeah. it was from that first roll of film. So but and then we were we were lucky because we all of our booker we had bookers in New York at our modeling agencies. We had one in L.A. We had yeah. have Miami Beach, Chicago, where we're from, was a really good market for modeling. Atlanta. And so we could test models and make money, you know, which was is really important when you're trying to be a photographer, because yeah. it's like it was it's, it's really yeah, hard when people start out. We get people talk to us all the time. And I'm like, man, it's just not easy because they can't, you really can't make a lot of money testing, you know, and it's. But and in it's, L.A., it's like because people can just do headshots and that's actually lucrative. It's one thing that people always need oh, in, yeah, in yeah. Los Angeles. So. If you can just start doing headshots of your friends and things like that, and you just slowly build up. Clearly, one of your friends is going to be on a show someday. I like, mean, I mean, that's yeah. for LA people. Yeah, LA you know? people. But it's like if you don't live in a place where there's not, you know, there's not entertainment kind of people around, like actors and people that yeah. need that kind of stuff. I, I don't know what. I mean, I guess that's why you go into shooting weddings or shooting something else. But we did. We have done weddings before too. In the beginning, we oh. did a couple of friends. I'm like, how? That is the hardest job in the world. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's know, very tough. Like that's a whole thing. But you can make a great living doing it. Like an incredible living doing well, it. Third of the most know? difficult clients you could ever. Yeah. It's and just, they do. Have, you do get. I mean, we actually like shooting the weddings. Incredible yeah. moments and doing that stuff. But it's just the the aftermath, which just like getting images to them and doing all this other stuff, and we're like, oh my goodness, yeah. Do There's you, a reason that those TV shows of reality about it. Yeah. Do you think? And I know you both said that you weren't, they weren't what you wanted to do. But do you think your previous careers? Because I know you graduated from the University yeah. of Illinois in economics. Um, do you think? Yeah any of your skills you learned in your previous career has helped you to grow your photography business? I'm, I'm thinking um, pure, purely of the, from the business side, I mean, not the creative I, side. God, I don't know how much it trans... I'm, I'm sure it does. It's, I, it, maybe it's just because you're familiar with that kind of stuff, and you know, but it's still the photography business. I guess it's just kind of the general way of how you organize your life, period, especially with regards to money and accepting or like yeah. putting out invoices i mean that's i it, i yeah. was in sales for uh, for ernest and julio gallo like the wine. biggest wine yeah. company in, <laughs> america. in america dealing with like uh freaking grocery stores i was in the yeah. in the wine business but it's like you know plus i had to be a salesman so it's like yeah i guess it definitely yeah. translates and i guess as a banker like yeah when I have money, I'm great, you know, but like, during, I'm like, yeah, the only reason I think about it, I think it's just the trauma of going through like starving artist periods of your career. When which you don't we, have which money. we had extreme starving artist period. Yeah. You know, which but, I think builds you better than which we, you know. but thankfully we had this incredible loft in Brooklyn that we were renting, which was yeah. in the ghetto when it, uh, when we yeah. first got it and we're like, this may be the dumbest thing. It was in Bushwick, Brooklyn, <laughs> which now Bushwick is like the place to be, which we're like, God, we should have hung on, hung on no, to that. My point being, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think it does help in our business, like being good with money and things like that, and just knowing about money and what to do with it and stuff like that. But um, 
Yeah, it's so funny. I don't even think about that. Like, yeah. You know, it's just interesting because sometimes they're often those jobs, they're just the thing you did before you do what you do now. But sometimes, yeah. and they don't always, but sometimes there's life lessons that yeah. you hadn't realized you'd learned from those jobs. Yeah. Maybe just a work ethic, you know, it's a work ethic thing where you're always, and we're, and we were treating it like a business. Cause a lot of people just don't understand. Yeah. It's a business. You gotta go and you gotta shoot. And guess what? You're not going to like shooting a lot of the stuff till you get, you know, hell we shoot tons of stuff we don't like, you know, and actually it's like, you're right. It, we do, it, it does wear off because you know, as a banker, my hours are like from like seven thirty to four thirty every day. Oh, so I, we get up very early every day, regardless of what we're doing that day. Yeah. Editing, I get up and do something and try to yeah. keep business hours at least to keep keep oh, yeah. yourself because you well, can get. Yeah, when we were first stuff. like in New York and had that place in Brooklyn, uh, Drew lived in the East Village and I lived at the studio, and yeah. uh, and it, he would just come in every morning. It's like coming in every morning. It was like nine. To, we treated it like nine to five, you know, yeah. and we would work all day, sending emails, doing what you got to do, connecting. If we had a shoot that day. Yeah. I mean, we, we got into retouching like right away and yeah. started taking classes doing that. I, we started, I mean, we were building websites from the beginning too. started taking classes doing that. So yeah, we, you know, we really did treat Actually, it like a business, like, I guess. I guess. Now that you start talking through it, you're like, well, yeah, we invested yeah. in that web design class. You invest in those kind of things. Because when you're when you're poor, you know, like <laughs> back in the day, trying to get a website, back in the people would charge you twenty thousand dollars for a website. I was like, twenty thousand dollars, <laughs> like, yeah. who's gonna pay? Who can pay that? You know? <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. I'm like, we plan B, go to this, you know, artist collective in Brooklyn, yeah. and for three hundred dollars a month, we could take unlimited classes, and one of them was a web design class, and it's like, yeah, okay, cool. Well, that's check that box. I mean, it took it took like three months, but it was it was yeah. worth it. You know, websites so, are yeah. are definitely one of those things, and you're absolutely right. When you look back to even a decade oh. ago, what oh, people yeah. were charging, and I guess because it was it's a, a true <laughs> skill to be able to code is a real yeah. skill. But of course, now we yeah. have Squarespace, we have yeah. WordPress, right, right. Anything, yeah. but those things didn't exist. So yeah, yeah they were expensive. Yeah. yeah, especially if you wanted something to look good. I mean, there was a gist there was like, yeah, something that looked good that was moving or any kind of like customization of it, you know. And plus, then they would have this a la carte way of building a website where how they would charge per image upload. Per, I was like, this is this so ourselves. expensive. Oh my God. If we want anything changed on it, that's going to be 200 bucks. So I was like, oh no. Yeah. While we're on the subject of websites, actually, you guys now have a vast body of work behind you. How do you whittle down to decide what images you'll display on your website to showcase your work well yeah it's, yeah, it's a long process yeah because it, it is you can't put too much on there it just clutters it up and you really have to narrow it down um ours has not been updated but we're, yeah we're, that's one thing we have to do like today we should be starting. we thought you know during this quarantine and all this stuff like how much we're going to get done on that website and we literally <laughs> we haven't, haven't touched, touched it, it. We haven't but, touched it yeah oh well, yeah but it's like uh you just yeah. kind of edit. Um, God, I'm trying to. It's yeah, you just, it's you just very. Going through your it's a long process. Ed- editing, yeah. I would say, is the absolute number one skill for a photographer to succeed because you need to know what that image is. You know, at least what we've experienced that, and it is a, an amazing blessing to get to work with like a, a really talented art director that you can see how they see your work. Because then you start seeing things and what they see, you're like, oh, my goodness. Okay. And then, you you know, like for us, we have to look at something 10 times before we pick our favorites almost because it can it can evolve. And, you you know, like Like it's hard. Like we'll edit down. We'll go through one round. Sometimes it's easy, though. Sometimes Sometimes it's like, like, oh, man, that's clearly it. Move on. But sometimes when we've shot a celebrity, like clearly we need to put this person on our website. We need to go through the shoot. It may not have been your favorite shoot or something, only in studio or something. So you go through it and you're like, okay, what's really going to be it? Then, But this is a high-profile person. We we have to find something. So then we'll go revisit it like the next day. Just give it some time. Go back. Revisit. And then just start cropping and playing a little more. And then, because it's so funny, and one day you're like, God, these look stupid. These these ones look stupid. And then you're like, okay, this is what it's all about. And then you kind of just, it takes us about three times of going through to really yeah, probably three times. find which image is, is, is your image. You know? That so. seems to be 
a common theme with nearly every photographer I've spoken to, actually, that reflection time when yeah. going through the edit process. What does it offer you guys? What does that reflection time away offer you when you revisit the images? Well, I, I think one thing I have to do is forget the shoot in my mind with distance somehow, because when you when you edit like the first time you go through something, the shoot is you're you're kind of like your mind is still polluted with all the thoughts of that day and like all the behind the, the scenes stuff. Yeah, going on. yeah, and maybe you're still upset that you didn't get to shoot exactly what you know. You have all these lingering kind of thoughts about yeah. what was happening that day. Yes, oh, yeah. of course. So when we're and he shoots most of the time, and I'm looking through it. And I'm like, oh man, this, this is what we got. Well, to? I was picturing here. Where the, where the, the hell? I mean, the fights that we <laughs> have in editing. Those is, are because he doesn't he doesn't see the camera a lot, and we, and we try hard never to shoot with a monitor. Because it just, unless a client is absolutely, you know, there's a lot of clients yeah, that need them, yeah, but it just slows things down so much. Uh, but he, a lot of times he's never seen an actual frame yeah. until it starts uploading and it's like, oh my God, like he'll just start freaking the fuck out. <laughs> and it's like, bro, <laughs> calm down. That's the beginning. I, I swear I got there and you're going through and I'm like, God, I hope I shot something wider on that. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You know? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so we'll go around and it's like, he'll just like, I mean, I mean, you'd think after this many, I mean, we've been shooting together, tech, I guess, 25 years, 20 years professionally, you know, full time. Yeah. Um, it's all trust. And we do have that trust. But there's certain times when I'm like, because you just could caught up. He gets caught up in what's going on. I think I'm standing right to the side going like. I'm picturing like, okay, you're shooting here and then it's something different. So then I have to kind of let that go when I'm yeah. editing. And then by the next time we go through it, I've let it go. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like this, this is great. Okay. I, I yeah. get what you're going for. This is, this is perfect. Yeah. yeah. But it was weird in the beginning. Drew was the one shooting like all the time. Like in the, we, we actually started, started we actually yeah. started shooting under my name, under Drew Riker. Cause we just didn't, there were no teams or anything. We, we just thought it would be cheesy. These identical yeah. twin models trying to shoot and like, so we're like, okay, it's going to be. When we started the film, and, you know, I was the only one shooting, and Derek was assisting. Well, because it was under saying. your name too. Yeah, so well, cool, clearly. Like, yeah. yeah. So, so it was like, like, okay, I'm gonna. Yeah. yeah. So it's so funny. So I it. would direct, he would shoot, and then it just like. Yeah, it's so funny how it's evolved completely the other other way. Well, yeah. that that was going to be one of my questions actually, because there yeah. are two of you. Do you have a natural uh, job role each when you go on a shoot or? Prior to going on the shoot, will you sit down and go, right, for this, I'll do this, you do that, and then divvy up the roles? Yeah, we used well, now, to divvy it up more, yeah. like, but now it's got to the now one basic system. Now it's pretty much strictly, I deal with, like, the Derek myself shoots. and, like, the, the first assistant and getting all the, I, I handle all the computer file stuff and the camera, Yeah, and then Drew's pretty much I'm the, just directing. The, I'm, he's on yeah. set. Dealing I'm directing with everything else. everyone, getting, I'm always the one dealing with the subject, like directly telling them what we're going to do, go and explain, kind of just keep changing it up and just, because we like to keep it fluid and, and like keep moving. So I'm always directing, like the, the subject always has something to do. It never gets too tiring or we'll switch yeah. the. Because a lot of times what our work is, is literally the white seamless kind of like cover try type of stuff, which is like. Yeah. You know, an art form in itself to make that good because it's like you're really kind of limited. So yeah, you know. so yeah, so he shoots mostly. I direct, Drew directs, and then um, and then even in post production, usually he will edit through the first run because it's so much for two people to be sitting down. And we shoot a lot. I mean, he shoots a ton of pictures. It's like 20, yeah, I like twenty five hundred yeah. images a shoot minimum, probably. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, I, I, often, I often tell people like. The difference between a professional photographer and an amateur <laughs> is how many pictures you do. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. you just have more options, you know. Yeah. No, no, hang on. If so, we say, if we say 2,500, how long are we talking to shoot here? That's like Another, a few, a few, four hours maybe. Okay. Yeah, just it like could be a few hours because you're okay. just really fast in between depends. moments. Where and I'm we like, like a lot of movement, so then it's just like, yeah, you know, he hates it, but I'll put it on this high speed stuff, but. Um, and it really, yeah. you know, we've been shooting like Sony, the seven R four lately, yeah. and, uh, that thing can shoot so fast, but those files are also so giant. So it eats up hard drive space. And oh, I mean, yeah. it's, we need a hard yeah. drive. I mean, yeah. capture one is like dying when it's like you, I mean, well, I, I started to, if it's over 3,500 images, I put it into two catalog or into two sessions because yeah, the computer otherwise movies. the computer just can't handle it, you know? Yeah. Well, actually that was going to be one of my questions as well from the moment. 
when you finish to shoot and you take the card out of the camera, what does your process look like in terms of software that you use or any systems that you have in place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we use Capture One. We've been using that for I don't know how long now, but it's just, I mean, we don't know what we'd do without that, you know. Yeah. Um, we've had assistants that are Lightroom people that haven't done that before, but um, but we much prefer Capture One. We tried to, like, do Lightroom at one point. We're like, why are we doing this? We're, we're, we're full on. And all of our assistants and, like, at professional places always are Capture, capture One. one. Yeah, so. Capture One. So, but, um, so if our assistants haven't downloaded it during, yeah. No, so I, I was just going to say, what does Capture One offer you that you like so much about the, the workflow? Well, it's mostly the it's mostly the processing tools. I mean, I do love how you know you can categorize the stuff, and I do like the sessions. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the real reason is the the processing of it and what we can do with it. You know, yeah, the raw and the tool, like, whatever the, the filter, whatever the the color, the tonal curves, whatever the yeah. And we the, have this, and we do have a what's the name of that one thing? We have we have all these plugins with all the every film that's ever been you know like we've got because we used to shoot film so we still feel comfortable in that people are like what are you talking about it's like uh, yeah, we just use this plug-in software that's literally it has every film that's ever been built you know and it, and it processes the total curve according to whatever that film is so i see depending on what shooting the color we picked like you can films. see what t-max 100 versus tri-x 400 looks like and you're just like oh wow and you just kind of like if we're shooting black and white or like yeah. want to process it black and white We'll put it into that and see how it goes. But uh, also with Capture One, you can recover highlights or like, or the shadows. It's just the, the it's new brilliant brilliant what one, you can do. The new Capture One is so insane because you can go plus or minus four stops, and the controls they have with black shadows and highlights and whites at the high ends, you can make you can bring anything back. You can or, you can make something look any way you want. It's like incredible. someone always like asks, like, do you miss film and all that stuff? And I'm like, not at all, not even close. Uh, because, well, first of all, it's just like, if you screw up the exposure on that and it's like, oh my God, that was such a magic moment. And then these days, I mean, I love a blurred shot or something that's not, you know, sharp as can be. And it's like, a lot of people don't like, you know, things that are blurred a little bit, but, um, but with digital, it's just like, you have so much leeway and you're you know i don't lose sleep over it anymore because no, you like can control it i mean you can totally screw up a shoot and bring it back like you could literally have it four stops off because i mean generally you know. we're not really technical i mean we're you know yeah. we know how to do the stuff but you know every once in a while we shoot spontaneously like crazy where it's like you know if you're shooting yeah. natural light what comes side light comes back with it real quick and you're like oh man did, i didn't adjust the camera or whatever yeah. and so thank god you know, for Capture One sometimes, because it's, it's literally, it doesn't even matter. You can like bring things yeah, back. It's, it's a miracle. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. And then even with graininess, you can get rid of that stuff in Capture One if it's too much or, I mean, it's really a lifesaver, I think, for, for yeah. imaging. But so. it just allows us to get, to make anything look exactly how we want. Or if our client needs it to look a different, you know, a certain way. If there's so much control in it, it's great. Oh my God, color-wise, you can yeah. do anything. You know, it's it's really amazing. Yeah. So, do you find... Yeah, that's your one life. <laughs> because life. You've mentioned it a few times. Because you understand how film works, which I'll be honest with you, I am very much in the digital camp, and film yeah. scares the life out of me. Oh, Main, no, no, mainly because scary as hell, yeah. you know what you guys said earlier you can take a shot and you don't know what you've got for yeah. a couple of days <laughs> that is terrifying yeah. for me but that sounds like horrible yeah. <laughs> i can't live do you think that because you understand and have shot on film and know how it works do you think that has given you a style of photography that you've carried forward into the digital era yeah because we still would like it to look like it's shot like on film we we're, yeah. we're romantics about you know the 80s and 90s fashion stuff where it wasn't so like everything's so micro focused and perfect and digital looking sometimes which we're not huge fans of that so much we wanted to make it look more more vintagey in a way more 90s yeah and i mean i we try to like keep it more because the the rhythm of shooting when you're doing film I still romanticize about that. It's great where you just pay more attention before you're filming, you know, before you're actually shooting yeah. and like really like 
get in your mind or like set up before because a lot of people you can see they're just shooting whatever it is and they'll just deal with it in editing you know it's like shoot just keep shooting and shoot whatever and i still like to come up with a very specific kind of you know set up for this shot with where they're going to be that kind of thing and like try to keep the rhythm kind of the way it used to be you know yeah yeah it's just different it's just different so well that's why we we really don't like shooting with monitors you know when you're shooting like people in the entertainment business a lot of people like they want to be able to see every frame which is just so debilitating as like an artist or trying to get a real moment because someone sees one bad frame especially if it's an actress and they're like their publicist or someone's like, oh, that looks horrible, you know, just because of one movement of something, they're like, oh my God, she looks horrible, or she looks, you know. It only creates bad things on set. And then it slows it down, and it makes the shoot just drag out, and then then you miss great moments. The actress gets in her head because someone's complaining. One person can complain about something, and because everyone's watching every shot. I know, we almost have this saying, like, before we start shooting, it's like, don't say anything negative, please, (laughs) about anything, because once that an actress or a, an actor go south go south on it you can't it's hard to come back you know you can yeah. say yeah so it's like we, we much prefer not to have those on set you just lose all control if you have a monitor and everyone's looking at it you know other people will start directing the person yeah and you're like whoa 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 whoa, whoa. Okay. why is the stylist doing this right now like hey hey yeah calm calm down you know <laughs> it's like do you so. find because there's two of you on set that there is a different energy perhaps than there would be with just one photographer and I say this because I work quite a lot with a very good friend of mine and when we're on set we're equals it's not a photographer and assistant we are equal we may do different jobs and we may not always be one of us may be shooting and one may be doing something else but we're equal and I think there is a respect that we get from the client because of that do you guys find that because there's two of you and two equals rather than a principal yeah, and an assistant? I think that energy is, is, why is, the reason, yeah. is a big part of our success, uh, especially being out here in the entertainment kind of world. It's like, yeah, they respect both of us. And, mm. you know, yeah, the more you can kind of spread out because we, we like it to be a collaboration with the stylist, the hair and makeup, everyone that's on set there to pay you know getting paid to you know to do what they're there for we like to give them all respect and everyone's got good ideas like we don't like to put ourselves above everyone in the room like we'll make the final even even we have assistants that have great ideas all the time and i'm like brilliant thank god you're here bro it's like (laughs) (laughs) it's like you know so i think shooting as a team just being able to collaborate between just two people instead of just one set of eyes you've got four eyes on things and just because that's like at the top, everyone's and, looking at that. I think they feel more free to get in to a creative conversation because it's all of a sudden it's between two, it's between three. And, and, like, and ultimately, and I'm sure you find this when you're shooting as a team, decisions just get, be, get made faster on set, which means yes. there's like people feel certain about things and then everyone's comfortable. And then it's like the day just runs smoother. If, if people are delayed in making a decision, it seems like they're not sure of themselves. If people aren't sure of themselves, that can crumble into like everyone not being confident about yeah. what's happening. I mean, there's so much pressure. You know, like, it just snowballs. And it's like, I think certainty on set is literally, it's got to be there or people won't trust you. And then when the trust is gone, it's like, you know, yeah. you're not going to get great pictures. Mm. You know? So on the note of great pictures, what for you guys makes a great portrait? I mean, just, I mean, just, someone just deeply connected and being yeah. themselves like a, and like where they can see themselves in it that maybe no picture or, or, or common pictures they've had of themselves uh don't really capture you know it's like there just has some light in the picture whether that's great lighting or just the light in the eye or in the movement or something they're doing you just realize you know yeah there's some kind of life happening that's yeah you know that's authentic and it feels real you know and we like it to be joyful and smile. I mean, our, our best are like, because we love smiles. We love smiling pictures and things like that, which was crazy when we, you know, shooting a lot of people to want smiley stuff. And we were like, oh, my God, people are more kind of angst, angst yeah, filled, yeah, like that's, that's, fashion-y, you know, which, yeah. you know, that's that's fine and dandy. But anyone can shoot that. Yeah. You know. But even like shooting a portrait of a person, it really just 
we want to be able to break somebody like and have them feel really themselves and comfortable on it. It, it's just something in the eyes when they just kind of relax for a second. Well, that's and like you, you go. I don't know if you've seen that portrait of David Hockney that we took, which was just a, one of the best days we ever had. Yeah. Which is which he lives up on Mulholland Drive, and yeah. um, really? you know, it, we get there and he's napping. So it's like <laughs> the, head of, the, head of the studio is like this brilliant French guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so we're 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 just visiting with him for about an hour and a half. I mean, in his home is amazing. His, his home. studio is just incredible. Yeah. And you're like, this is just unbelievable. I mean, he's yeah, so legendary. The natural light in this giant studio. We're like, well, this is going to be an incredible photo because look at the light in here. Uh, yeah. He's got like all of his like charcoal things are hanging around us. And we're like, this is going to be amazing. But I'm like, he, he walks in and I mean, he's disheveled and like, he's, like from a he's been sleeping yeah. in his suit, in his and, suit. His, and he just looks tired, you know, and you're like, oh my goodness, like. How are we? And we're trying to engage him, and he was, you know. Yeah, he's not very talkative. Not, yeah, whatever, we're like, but, this is a disaster. And yeah. I mean, I think I ended up only because he started looking annoyed. But it um, took maybe forty frames, right? You were there. No, it's like 20, 20, 20, <laughs> like twenty frames of him. And thank God, there's one in there where he's just on his cigarette, kind of like whatever. And he just like, kind of, oh. and he kind of gets the joke, like he's been difficult. He's been like, you know, just kind of like smirks a little bit. And it's, yeah. it's very subtle, but you, you like, like, oh, oh okay, he likes us. Okay, that's all he's going to give us. It's, it's great. You know? But it, it was just one kind of real thing that he was doing in the picture, because otherwise it just looks like he's standing there. So. Oh, he's like, annoyed. Yeah. We're like, thank God we got at least one frame with that. And, and, and his, his studio manager was like, oh, he loves you guys. We're like, oh, really? Because yeah. yeah, we didn't feel like Because <laughs> he didn't yeah. show it. <laughs> and then the editor of the magazine was like, oh, it's so brilliant. We're like, oh, thank God. Because, yeah. you know. Yeah, because we didn't really know. We were driving home, and I'm like going through in the car, looking through the frames. I'm like, I mean, it's oh. David Hawking, so you, you can't miss. I mean, he's a legend, I mean, so yeah. whatever you get is really going to be usable because – if it's very serious and he's just standing there, that works too. If he's just like doing nothing, but yeah. As for Riker Brothers' picture, we wanted to get something other than just yeah. standing, standing. There. Yeah. So I'm pleased you mentioned that actually because it was going to be one of my questions. That was, have you yeah. ever found yourself in a situation on a shoot where circumstances outside of your control as photographers could have affected your work, and how wow. did you ensure, or how did you overcome? those circumstances to ensure your work remained true to what you and your style is yeah this is one of our first stories and this kind of was like i think made us who we are as photographers like early on in our career we're shooting for cosmo magazine and we did this we shot all their men stuff like they'd have this four page thing each month of these of like these hot guys whatever and then uh they asked us to do their bachelor issue and literally we shoot one guy from each state for the bachelor, it's yeah, like a so bachelor. Fifty, 50 guys, fifty guys, oh. and, on, and we're shooting in the Hamptons. And plus, they're flying themselves in from all over the country. Um, we had to shoot eighteen guys in one day, seventeen, 17 the next, in the next. In the but the first day of shooting, it rained eight eight inches in the first day. It's pouring yeah. the whole time, and like we have the most beautiful location. But it's pouring, and we have to like shoot thunderstorms so, and pouring. And yeah. So I mean, literally. We just got a white tent for us to stand under to shoot, and a white umbrella, umbrella. and it's pouring, but it, the whole thing was just don't freak out. And like, we were freaked out the whole time. It's like, what the hell is this going to look like? Cause, yeah. Um, but there, the locations were great. The light's kind of deep and incredible because it's not sunny, but it's rich and dark. Like, yeah, because it's just like a giant softbox. Soft At least it's kind of like yeah, even when it was glowing warm. light. It was consistent through the whole day. So, so the light, we, yeah, it's like how did, you know, because which is challenging to shoot that many people throughout an entire day without the light going bad for some at some point. Oh, when it's perfectly course. sunny, it's really difficult yeah. to this was just but, something, yeah. Yeah. So this was just something we're like, I guess we're going to do it. And at least we were just like, well, screw it. I mean, the clients here, they know it's, we're screwed. It's, it's pouring rain all day. But literally, but the those pictures photos on those two days are still like, out they were so like, incredible. The most beautiful pictures they've ever seen, whatever. And it's like, and because of that day, it's like, we don't care what the, but we would cancel shoots all the time on rain. Day. But now, yeah. It just turned. That's what the photos were meant to be. It was just incredible, and we shot so fast because the lighting doesn't change. You could put anyone in anywhere, and it looked exactly the same as long as it actually had, made it easier. Yeah, in because, the end, because you like, kind of had your own your own mini studio outdoors, yeah. kind of. Yeah, 
basically is a perfectly lit studio anywhere you look. So it was great. So just going through that whole process in that job, and then once it was published and we got these big checks because we got paid by the page back then, we're like, well, that was like one of our best jobs ever. And it literally started out as like the most stressful day of our lives. And yeah. Like, you could, you just you just go with the flow, and the pictures are going to make themselves. It doesn't matter. It's like literally yeah. about the energy of the day so much, yeah. and it, having a good sense of humor about shit because yeah. it's like this ain't this ain't rocket science, and and we're dealing with like you know actors promoting a TV show. Like this isn't <laughs> that important, you know. And if yeah. people are taking themselves that seriously, it's like yeah, that's you know, yeah. we're able to do it usually. You know? But you are presented with bad situations like that and what we do all the time. I mean, oh yeah, because you're given like so little time to shoot some people. You're like, okay, you have to shoot them for, I'm trying to think of of an example of something recently. I should have come up with it before. I yeah, 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 no, yeah. <laughs> I'm pleased you said the weather there because I've asked that question to a few photographers, all of which have been based here in the UK. And the answer is always the weather. So I'm pleased yeah. that even in glorious, where were you in, in New York? That was New York. That was New York. LA, it never rains. I mean, it literally never rains here. So, you know. But it can be way too hot. But, like, right now, if we had to shoot today, it would be a disaster. Like, if it, especially if you were shooting a woman today. You would, a with hair and makeup, they they would, it, it would probably. be really challenging. It's just too hot right now, and it's like they're not they're going to be like, I'm sweating. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, look, in that case, before, before I, you, you lose enormous amounts of weight just sweating in the heat let me i've got a few more questions for you and then i'll let you go and enjoy your day do you guys have any do you have any personal projects that you like to work on outside of your commissioned work well a lot it's funny because your personal project yeah, turns into like because we're getting a lot more into video um and we love shooting music videos are so fun and so creative to do so and really to evolve in this business as a photographer you need to be able to like to get paid by the clients here in town and whatever. Um, you really need to be able to do video because uh, still pictures like modern advertising and things. It's all social media based and stuff like that. Every everyone needs video, you know. So um, we've been shooting a lot more video and projects like that. Um, it just opens your yeah your uh, you know your your number of jobs that you can do. Yeah, yeah. I'm so. trying to think. Um, and still we just. I mean, we shoot like our own personal fine art kind of stuff that we're starting to get into, which is just more just like naturey palm tree stuff, basically just for us to just like decorate our, our homes and stuff. <laughs> I'm like, any other pro- like fine art stuff I'm trying to think that we could do? I mean, a lot of like we're going to be doing this more Black Lives Matter type oriented thing, but we're doing it for a client. So yeah. it's like, yeah, we kind of like to incorporate any yeah. of those kind of portrait things. Yeah, because we're lucky you know. that, I mean, we just were getting signed on to be creative directors of this new, like, bra, like, lingerie brand. Um, yeah. And one of the projects, it would be a personal project, but now we get to shoot it for them. It's like, we're shooting yeah. a bunch of, uh, like, women of color, like, young women of color that are all these oh, activists and things like that. So we're going to be doing portraits, but it's going to be more video and talking about their passion. But just basic white background, studio, like, you know, um, it's pretty kind of old school Calvin Klein type, type of, of thing. confession type of stuff, like the '90s kind of campaign. Type yeah, so of that's kind of the more uh, personal stuff is getting more political and, and helping in the activism through our art. I guess would be. I thing. see. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And I'm pleased that you mentioned video actually, because it's is that, is that something? Because obviously, it's not the area that you guys began. It's not where you started your work. But is that something that has served you well throughout your careers? Just that ability and want to keep improving and exploring new avenues that's everything well you know herb ritz who was so close to he did some of the most iconic you know black and white and you know actually not black and white but videos from like madonna to janet jackson and and, uh and stuff and like that chris isaac's video with helena christian and most people remember yeah and it's like those and even those videos we've always been interested in a moving picture uh just from him because then when before he died he was wanting to do a full feature film and we talked to him about his video work because it's hilarious he's told the stories about like his first video was was the cherished video of madonna and since he wasn't familiar with video he had an 85 lens or something or something so he but he didn't have the proper lens so if you watch that video it's so ultra ultra tight tight and whatever (laughs) oh my 
gosh, what was I doing? You know? Yeah, you're like, oh, that's why it looks that way. He, that's the only lens he had, and it's ultra tight and stuff. But and plus, then, we also do approach our video just like I, we look at a, a, a photo, a photo yeah. frame, like when we look through a camera. So it really does set you apart from other people's video work that didn't come from fashion photography, for sure. Yeah, um, it, it can get like we out. like coming in tight and doing like beauty, and we but like we doing, shoot you know, video the same way we shoot like our our pictures, and uh, yeah. which is different from most people out here. Like if you come from the camera world, you're more of a camera guy trying to they shoot more wide angle stuff, yeah. and making sure everything. The first the few DPs we used to use would shoot things so wide, and we're like, wow, this just isn't looking the way I wanted to. And so mm. we, I mean, so then we, I mean, we do all of our own mostly now. Yeah. We can DP all of our own. Yeah. So it's like. And that works out great for a team because, yeah, um, it's already built in as a team shooting video because then he's it the makes deep, perfect sense. He's there, the yeah. DP and then I'm the director, um, yeah. like especially for music videos and stuff is what we shot. Which music videos are the easiest thing technically to do because it's basically art. You're not worried about sound. sound you know, it's yeah. like people like I'm like it's literally like the easiest thing you can do. You know, yeah, um, yeah. Because and then there's no real story. Like we don't get into narrative stories for music videos we kind of like prefer more, to more like more fashion, like fashion things yeah but um which makes it really easy because you can just edit it anyway you yeah know. of course because you've, you've got the track your, your quest is that we do all of our own editing as well and I, I do think that they set us apart um early on as being ahead of the game like even with retouching we started doing our own retouching like 2000 2001 yeah like and so, uh, forever ago. So we do that. We used to make a ton of money retouching back then. <laughs> but um, and now we do. That all was a our, magic trick for sure. But now we do all of our own vi uh, video editing as well, and to be able to do that and offer that to, to a client as well, you know, when we have time, clearly. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah, just just it's, that you're aware of everything that. And goes it is through. fun to mix it up. On days we get to do that. On days we're doing still stuff. It definitely makes it more fun day to day. You know, so. Fantastic. Yeah, keeps, keeps works, I mean, I mean, we get to do something amazing for a, a living. So it's like where yeah. we know that we're super lucky and blessed, and it's like you know. Yeah, and then we just stuck it out. It's really persistence in staying in the business this long. I mean, we're turning fifty in a couple weeks. And, You're uh, not. Yeah, and we're like, okay, yeah, okay. I, I get why. Like, finally, like we're getting good. We don't even need it. We we got rid of our agents uh, like over a year ago now. Yeah, but we really don't need them because people are just they just contact us directly like even even during the quarantine even more importantly a lot of these celebrities just because we know them personally they've invited us to their homes to do shoots for their businesses and things like that so literally just being in the business this long your your network just keeps growing and growing and uh yeah yeah i, I mean i'm just yeah i'm absolutely i'm genuinely blown away that you guys are nearly 50 i had no idea i yeah wow Lots, lots of wisdom here, you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness no, me! We get to wake up and do what we love every day, you know. Like, well, I, like you don't have that stress about your life of like, we get up to to do our passion every morning. There's yeah. that stress. Like, I can't believe my life is this. And I, I just remember from being a banker at my job of like, that's all that was in my mind every morning. I got up going like, ah, oh, can't believe I got to go sit in this office all day long for what? Like, this is my life. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, we haven't had a boss, you know, like we've been working for ourselves, you know, since we were, you know, since 93. So. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, look, I'm going to ask you a few quick fire questions and I'm not necessarily looking for anything deep, anything meaningful. I'm just looking for a gut reaction and either of you or both can answer this. So black and white right. or color. That's such a oh, tough question. Oh, Lord. The fact that that's such a tough I love question. them so much. Um, I'll go black and white. I'll go color. That's, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh. Because <laughs> <See, there you laughs> it's so funny because it's so different. Yeah, like, because um, black and white is, like, such a fine art thing, and it's clearly, like, people love black and white because that's not how you see. We see in color naturally. So when you see a black and white photo, it's so captivating a lot of times. It seems more yeah. important. Yeah. Okay. But to do a really amazing, okay. there's nothing like an incredible color picture that where the color it's its own character of the picture so it's like it we we do both so it's like i mean 
Yeah, yeah. So he's got he's kind of going to go on to other things. We don't have to expound <laughs> on each one of these. Yeah, right. No, but just to talk, like black and white, because yeah. we go through times like, are people going to take us seriously if we're not shooting more black and white? Or do you, you know, does it look so commercial? If it's a color, too commercial. It's all <laughs> so we have battle, you know. But but I guess that's why again working as two of you is really good because you're both of you. Your natural instinct was the opposite there, actually, which was quite interesting. But I guess what yeah. makes you guys a strong yeah. team. Yeah, because we, yeah, yeah. we definitely have two philosophies, too. Like, I would like want to take a million pictures uh, to get that one perfect frame. Like, I want yeah. one amazing frame. Drew is literally like, he'll direct forever. Well, I'm a, that's why I don't and he, a He's looking, yeah, he wants every frame to be perfect, you know? And I'm like, I don't know. Well, I'm more of a control freak. When I was shooting, I shoot a lot oh. slower, and I just make sure it's something I like, the angle, everything's got to be perfect. So there's somewhere in the middle. He's shooting a million things, and I'm trying and to, it, like, yeah. corral him into what I want, basically. <laughs> and then somewhere in the middle we get, yeah. Yeah, we'll somewhere get. it works out. Yeah. Okay. I think I know the answer to this, but I've said this to other photographers, and I've been wrong. I think I know Derek's answer. But let's see. Prime or Zoom? Oh. Well, now I'm, this is easy. I'm Zoom, clearly. <laughs> and I'm Zoom now, too, because I don't shoot and he's shooting. But um, but it is funny because we started oh, only on Prime. So I was such a Prime snob when we started shooting with film, like just coming from fashion and art world, you know. It's like, but once we started shooting celebrity and stuff and you have limited time to shoot with Prime, like you, you want to be able to cover everything at once. You can't like take the light with a different camera and shoot. And- because they always want like full length, tight, three quarters. So we switched to to uh, zoom lenses not that long ago, probably five years, like seven years ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Just because it's six, like six years ago. You, yeah. you don't have time basically to take it off and do that yeah. stuff. And so then, now it's the zoom just gives you so much freedom now, and that's what it. That's what our photography is about. It's just making a giving a, a, a subject freedom to just do whatever and we kind of capture it so yeah yes um, of course so the, the zoom allows us to just get everything quickly get a wide shot quick get going super tight if you want mm-hmm. so okay yeah, yeah. all right so, uh, i'm gonna go this this one many years ago was quite a straightforward canon or nikon but now i'm gonna go canon nikon or other because there's a lot of other good bodies yeah. out there now well, we, well, we shoot Sony, so we have seven R four right now. We shoot the Sony seven R four for mo- all, most of our stuff now, which is, I mean, it's a sixty point megapixel, yeah, sixty one megapixel it's, camera. It's it's, it's beautiful. The focusing on it is like so reliable. It's um, it's funny because we were Nikon guys, but we shot Canon digital. <laughs> it's like, yeah, because they started in digital before Nikon. They were ahead of the curve with digital, so we switched to Canon when we did digital. But then, yeah, what was it, five, four, three years? We used a Nikon a, a, a few months ago. We were shooting the 850 for a little bit. But when we, yeah. yeah, but when we started shooting more video on the same days as shooting stills, Canon didn't have auto. Sony was the first camera to come out that had autofocus video. So that's why we switched to Sony back then, because we were on set and we're like, I don't want to have to buy a whole other thing. Let's... If we switch to Sony, we can shoot the video with the camera all at the same time, and we don't have to worry. So we traded in all of our Canon lenses, cameras, and yeah. switched to full Sony like three years ago. Now, forgive right. my and ignorance on the R4. Is that mirrorless? Yeah, it's yes. mirrorless, yeah. Yeah, that's a weird – it's an electronic viewfinder, too. So it's, Which is weird to get used to if you haven't had it. But it's yeah. Like, um, but now it's weird. When I went back, to, we were shooting Nikon. That was, God, that's well, it was in January. Yeah. yeah. And it was so weird to be back after shooting Sony to be like the regular viewfinder and like, oh my God, this is, this is so different now. Like yeah. it's you know, like with the Sony anymore, if you have the focusing um, set up properly, you don't even have to think about it because it searches for eyes, it searches for things. It's like. You don't even think about focusing. You don't. You can just frame it the way it wants. It finds it, and you, I'm like, you can have a subject it, running straight at you, and it just stays in focus. It's, yeah, it's, it's it just feels like cheating, really, at this point. You know, I mean, we're getting older. It's harder. Yeah, you know, eyes are going. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that is genuinely one of the wonderful things about the way cameras have evolved. Like you say, it fe- it feels like cheating, but 
It's not. Yeah, it yeah. just it just yeah, makes yeah. life so much easier, and it allows you to work more efficiently. Yeah, and more reliably, really, because I remember yeah. we were really kind of when we were leaving Canon. It was we were having focusing issues with that, oh, one, yeah, and I was yeah. like, "Oh man, like this isn't it? Maybe we'll try yeah. that." And you know, ours if 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 focusing goes away on a, on an important shoot, you are screwed. You know, yeah. so it's so critical, and we were just having some issues. Um, but man, I mean, we're not really married to any one brand. Yeah, um, I mean, that because we used a Nikon with the D850, and that that was great. That was great too. Like, yeah. But then Sony just came out with it. It's 61 megapixel, the 7R4. And sometimes, the files are just plus massive, you want to be so. able to shoot that big billboard stuff. Like certain certain clients need to, you to do larger files like that. And we used a Phase 1 not long ago yeah. with those backs. And the 100 things, megapixel back. And it's like one, they yeah. just don't have the performance of like a Sony or a Canon or an Icon. It's I mean, literally one frame every like it's three so, seconds. It's, it was maybe the most painful day of my life in a long time because it just doesn't focus <laughs> like that. You know, it's like, Clearly the images are amazing if someone's standing still, but for just even a little bit of movement we like to do, so you're just missing all the magical moments. So that's why we shoot mostly like Sony like, format. Yes. I also enjoy, and it sounds so much nicer that you guys say Nikon. We say yeah. Nikon. We bastardize it over here. <laughs> Nikon. It sounds so much nicer. I might adopt that. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna bring it over here. Um, I, I, I did live in London for a year at one point. So yes, you should have known. I, yeah, I should have known. I should remember. Yeah. No, I much prefer your way. Let's stick with yours. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure I know the answer to this one. So, film or digital? Oh, dig- digital for sure. One thousand percent. Yeah. Just because you can get it to look exactly however you want. If you want it to look like film, you can make it look like film. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. if, if you, I, I just don't, I need to sleep at night. So, you know, <laughs> I got to, and you're pretty much guaranteed it's going to, it's going to be yeah. there. Film is, film is tricky. It's a living thing. It's, it's tough. You have to expose it perfectly, you know. Of course. And we have, uh, I shot it it's baked so. in the cake if, when you're shooting film. If you, you know, it's like you just don't. You can't change it. How much does a roll of film even cost anymore? I have no idea. Uh, yeah, I, crazy. No, I have no idea. Oh, on. I think I what... I think what, the photographer is doing it and bringing it down. Studio light or natural light? Natural light. Natural, natural light. light. Natural, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like we have to shoot this job on Thursday. And like, we love to have a, a big, like a studio, but we need... This one that we love to shoot, it just has this huge garage door, at least, so we can have a whole... It's like a 20-some foot ceiling with the whole door opens up on the and side. And they actually have a scrim that's built for the space, so it's tw- it's a 20 by 10 yeah. foot yeah. scrim that fills that space. So, so even, it's just like a big light box from the side if you want to do that. It's all, Anytime we shoot there, it's like people are like, where is this? It's like, my God, yeah. how are you lighting this? I'm like, it's natural light. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's just coming... It's because it really is. You can't. I don't care how long you've been shooting. You can't get it to look like yeah, that. You can't you know? really so. it. Yeah. I'm glad. I was right. I was no, right yeah, on yeah. that one. <laughs> All right. There we go. Last yeah. one. Home or abroad? Home or abroad. Although I, I guess for you guys, home. you mainly shoot in Los Angeles. I would guess. Yeah. yeah but, especially now. Yeah. I would say abroad, though, for sure. I it's, would say abroad. We just haven't got. You know, since 2010, when the economy went down, like we moved to LA after the economy went down in 2008, 2009. So we magazines up, were closing, and everyone stopped flying. Everyone everywhere at that point for a um, moment. Yeah. So yeah, we rarely get to go travel. Just a few times a year at, up, up to this yeah, point, it's and it's mostly like it. just to New York. So. We'd love to go shoot anywhere. Oh, there's nothing else better than when you get like, wait, where do we get to go? I you mean, know? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I did a trip to Borneo and a trip to. Oh uh, yeah, you did that. To the Maldives, and I was like, I mean, it's just that's just cheating when you get to be on those kind of locations. You know? <laughs> Everything it's looks beautiful good. Beautiful everywhere. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. One final question: If you could both journey back to spend a day with those fresh-faced youngsters that turned up on a Miami beach and got scouted to be models, what... Yeah. Well, firstly, how would you spend the day with them? And secondly, what advice would you give them? I would just be like, 
man, I, you got to give me some of that confidence that you had, like, <laughs> no. kind of crazy. Oh, you're going to tell them. Yeah, no, no, no. yeah telling them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like, I'm going to ask them. Like, I'm like, As an old person, you're going to ask for your confidence of your younger self. Yeah, yeah, yeah I swear yeah. to God. Yeah. It's like, that's the that's a funny way to answer that. Yeah. That's great. Instead of giving your younger self advice, it's funny. Yeah, I'd be like, yeah, because we were just fearless back then. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so, I think that's one of the, the wonders of youth, isn't it? That fearless yeah. energy. Oh, yeah, I always yeah. try to, like, dial that back when I can, because it's like, you know. Yeah, I'm but, trying to think when I would actually tell my younger self of something. Like, well, luckily, our lives, we, we kind of did, I, I mean, we're, we, we've made choices that we're Virgos, and we're, we're kind of risk-averse people, generally, and even being from the Midwest, our, our dad was a lawyer, our mom was a nurse, very... Yeah. We're like we're like the American kind of regular people, you know. You, yeah. we're, not, we're not the ones that go chasing your dreams and stuff. They're all farmers and you know yeah. all that stuff. So it's like uh, uh, the fact that we actually went and did it, and I, I'm like I'm so grateful to my younger self for having done it because it was it was such a massive yeah, decision I probably at would the have, time. Yeah, you that's know? what I would say is like you're doing the right thing. Like thank God yeah, you quit reassure, your, yeah, thank reassure. God you quit your jobs to be here in Miami. So don't be, you know. Don't be afraid. Just uh, go keep this fearlessness, fearlessness going. And otherwise, we'd be picking up photography at fifty. Yeah. Right now, <laughs> we'd yeah. be like, "My God, yeah. where did my life yeah. go?" You know? Yeah. I think so. that is the perfect way to conclude our conversation. Derek and Drew Riker, thank you so much for joining me on the Standout Photography Show. Yeah, okay. thank, you thank you so, so much, much Matthew. This was amazing. Thanks. Absolute yeah. pleasure. Now, listen, if people want to go and see and explore your wonderful work, where can they go? Uh, uh, go to our website, RikerBrothers.com. Yeah. And then our Instagram is Riker Brothers. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, we'll make sure we update it for people here. We have yeah. some good stuff to put on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Gents, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, this all the best. Great. I can't wait. We'll, we'll be listening all the time now. Yeah, it's such I a great show. I love the show. That was my conversation with wonderful Derek and Drew Riker. Gents, thank you so much for joining me here on the show. I cannot, cannot thank you enough. And I hope you guys enjoyed listening to those wonderful gentlemen as much as I enjoyed speaking with them. If you did and your ears are enjoying what they are hearing at the Standout Photography Show, please support the show with your words, not your wallets. It takes less than 30 seconds on Apple Podcasts or wherever you are listening right now, but it does make a huge, huge difference to help us secure only the very finest photographers in the world for you guys to listen to. While we are on the subject, is there a photographer that you would like to hear on the Standout Photography Show? A lot of you have been in touch recently with names and suggestions, and it's thanks to you we have managed to secure some pretty fabulous guests over the coming weeks. So if there is someone you would like to hear from, you can drop me a message personally on Instagram or Twitter at Matthew D. A. Walker. That is Matthew D. A. Walker. Or you can follow the show at The Standout Company. For now, thank you as always for tuning in. I've been Matthew Walker. They have been Derek and Drew Riker. And you, you have been sensational. Until next time, look after yourselves. Take care. 